Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Bengaluru, India. It's the FIBA Women's Asia Cup, and it's the game between Japan and Korea. Well, Korea looking to bounce back uh, from a difficult game against Australia yesterday. They were soundly beaten, whereas Japan uh, coming off a strong performance on day one. This is what we've seen today. Australia rolling to a big win. New Zealand pulling away in the second half against the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Later, we'll see China go up against Chinese Taipei. Of course, uh, the big deal about this is you see Australia and Japan uh, up at the top. Australia have already won two games. They won earlier today against the Philippines, so they're 2-0. Now Japan trying to join them. Korea do not want to go into tomorrow at 0-2. Uh, I'm guessing they would like to avoid China in the quarterfinals, if at all possible. Uh, so they will like their chances today against Japan, who are not playing with Ramu Takashiki at this FIBA Asia Women's Cup. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Mick Beck. And uh, we've seen one team just bounce back from a disappointing result on day one. That was New Zealand winning against the, the uh, North Koreans. And now, are we going to see the same from Korea? Because if we do, they're going to have to do it against a very good Japanese team. Well, thanks, Jeff, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. The one thing that struck me about this Korean team in their uh, loss yesterday, they didn't look as good as they did in practice. They are a good shooting team. That wasn't evident at all in the game yesterday against Australia. It's something they must redress today, but uh, look at this Japanese team, 106 points on the board. It's a team that's in full swing. And uh, I'm not sure Korea are going to have the wherewithal to really control uh, this Japanese team. Well, hello, folks. If you're just joining us, we're in Bengaluru, India. It's the FIBA Asia Women's Cup 2017. And it's an all Far East battle between Korea and Japan. The Koreans are looking to bounce back from a heavy defeat to Australia, going up against a Japanese team that has uh, already started this tournament uh, with a resounding victory. And of course, that came at the expense of the Philippines. We don't really know how good the Japanese are, uh, especially as they play, they've played without Rambu Takashiki. Uh, we suspect they have the potential to be very good, but this game should tell us a lot about Japan. Now, as the players are introduced here, uh, both teams will be lining up for the playing of the national anthems. And when we come back, we'll look at the uh, referees, the rosters, starting fives for both teams, and we'll also get more thoughts from you, Lord Bet. And the referees and the commissioner for this game. Chief Crew Chief, Mr. Rabba Nujain from Lebanon. First umpire, Mr. Yevgeny Mikhaev from Kazakhstan. Second umpire, Mr. Mogme Frida from Thailand. And the commissioner, Mr. Ali Fadel from Brunei. Please rise for the national anthem of Korea, followed by Japan.
the national anthems played for Korea and Japan. And we're about just under four minutes uh, away from the start of this contest. Important game, obviously, both of these teams uh, aiming for a top four finish to get into the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. And Japan are the two time defending champions. Um, but they're without their tournament MVP of the last two years. Ramu Tokashika, who stayed in the WNBA this, this summer. As for Korea, well, we know that they came up just short of getting to the Olympics uh, last summer. So they're looking to bounce back strong. The refereeing crew for today, Nojaim, Mikheyev, and Mwongme from Lebanon, Kazakhstan, and Thailand. And very shortly, Mick, uh, we'll see the rosters. But I guess it's not a disgrace if you're Korea to lose to Australia, even convincingly, on opening day. And it's also uh, no reason uh, to get overjoyed if you're Japan after beating uh, the Philippines. Uh, who are we going to look to step up here as we look at the, the roster for Korea? Well, you know, if you look at the performances from yesterday, I think uh, the uh, losing to Australia, as you said, was no great uh, shame. I think that uh, Jisoo Park with her eight points and eight rebounds yesterday will be looking for a better game from her. That's the uh, number 19 down the bottom there, Park Jisoo. And uh, there are a couple of others that uh, I think need to step up to the plate. Only one player in double figures yesterday, that's Sim Jung Sung Young with her 11 points. Um, did they shoot very well yesterday? No, 5 of 12 from the three-point line, 13 of 44. They have to come up with a better performance against Japan tonight, or they're going to look at another loss quite quickly. Well, we saw Evelyn Mawuli really kind of emerge yesterday for Japan, uh, number 30. Yuki Miyazawa uh, played a lot of minutes for Coach Tom Hovas's former assistant. Now he's the head coach of Japan. And Yuka Osaki, of course, is the same player as Yuka Mamiya. She has, she's gotten married in the past 12 months, so her last name has now changed. And there is Hovas. He knows this will be a test today. He fully expects it. And he's faced Korea on numerous occasions. Well, one thing for sure, Jeff, he's going to add that steeliness to this team, that little mental resilience that you uh, love to build up in your teams when you're coaching. Uh, this Korean team is going to be under the cost. This Japanese team, I uh, still go back 106 points against any team. They're going to be buoyed with confidence and they're going to come out guns are blazing, I'm sure. I uh, like this Japanese team. Don't forget, the starters sat down fourth quarter for uh, Japan. Now look at Miyazawa. She had the eight points, three rebounds, three assists yesterday against Pei. Hayun uh, had the eight points and three rebounds against Australia. Koso from Korea wearing the glasses. And of course, Tom Hovas over there shaking the hands of the referees here to wish them luck before the game. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Bengaluru, India. It's the FIBA Asia Women's Cup, and it's a class between Japan and Korea. It's day two, and we're off. Park Jisoo, the impressive youngster, winning the opening tip for Korea. And she's going to get a touch. And it's kind of an interesting, uh, shall we say, uniform that the Koreans are wearing. Isn't it? It's kind of a diff two different shades of blue. Don't often see that, do you? But you can see straight away where Korea want to attack with Park Jisoo. But also the Japanese defense looking to front her at all times. 
Uh, Cam Danby misses uh, early on, and we have got Asami Yoshida that tries to push it up the floor quickly. And now the drive and the foul. Uh, shot clock went off, but the foul occurred just before, so they'll uh, sideline ball for Japan. So that was Takata that was bumped as she got into the lane. And you can see the uh, interesting point guard matchup as well with Yoshida and number four, Sim, who was quite active for Korea yesterday against Australia. Inside to Takata. Nice little uh, just pass and cut, really. Managed to get the... Uh, ahead of... Uh, sorry, uh, managed to get ahead of the defenders to make the cut. And the long three, or the long, the long jumper, rather, from M, who was quiet yesterday. Very quiet, so that's a good start for her. Kando. So Kondo misses with her first. And again, Kim Danby off target. Asami Yoshida over to Takata on the baseline. Yeah, a wonderful fast break. And Jeff, we watched the New Zealand team just play and refuse to fast break. And you see a team like Japan that just in, like Australia, in full swing on the break. Poetry in motion. Well, Yoshida didn't have to play much yesterday, did she, against the Philippines? No, so she, she should be well rested. And she will be uh, six minutes. That's all she plays. She'll be triggering those breaks. And we got a foul. Look at this fast break here, Mick. No look pass there from Yoshida. Saki's been subbed out early, Jeff. I'm not sure whether there's a problem with the way she's playing or maybe picked up a little injury. Well, I think... Uh, remember, she took a knock yesterday. Uh, she came down hard on the court, didn't she? But I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Doesn't seem like it. Or else why would she have started? So, Kim, finally, she's come out. You know what? She missed her first two shots. She stuck with it. The good ones keep putting them up. You know, credit to Kim Danby. Yes, the major player for Korea. Seven points yesterday. Good start for her. Bounce pass to Kata. What team and Park Ji Su. Great reach. And the ball went off of Japan. Well, outstanding basketball there. I'm not sure what Akahu was doing. I think she intimated the ball slipped out of her hands, but it was laid on a plate for her. In, looks down low. It's a good call. Moving screen, I think. Number four uh, for Korea, Sim Sung Young. Just, I mean, she's setting the screen. You've got to be standing still. She just barrels in to one of the Japanese girls. So, intriguing start here with Korea leading at 5-4 to four after that Danby, Kim Danby, uh, three. And the long three off target there from uh, Nagaoka. And they hit Bay. She has it knocked away. Now, Sami Yoshida. Good, good, uh, good hands from Yoshida. Oh, behind the back pass, uh, Nagaoka has it. Oh, tough and move. What a knock. That's two defensive plays now that Park Ji Su has made. Well, what a block in the end, wasn't it? Because there's a good move from Naoka, Nagaoka as well. Him, hands off Park Ji Su and draws the foul. And Akaho. the foul's on Akaho, yeah. yeah. So a 5 4 start for Korea, but Korea looking. Like they're not gonna give up, uh, not gonna bow down easy in this one. 
definitely putting up a fight. Well, you know, it's a game like this where if you're Japan, you really notice the difference of uh, not having Takashiki. Absolutely. And, and this is where Miyazawa, Akaho, well, mainly uh, Kawamura, the power forward, and also Asaki, uh, they have to really uh, stand up and be counted. But as we saw, Asaki has gone out of the game. Akaho's just subbed out as well, and Miyazawa's replaced her. So it was uh, like for like there. And Park Jisoo followed her shot, tapped it to Kim Jambi. In, puts it up, count it! And the two is good. Tough shot from Yi, off the dribble, just no hesitation. Takata. Now in, over to Kim. And she drives in, scores again, in with the left-hander. Yeah, I'm not sure they played the pick and roll very well there. That should have been an automatic switch with Yim. Bounce pass to gets away from Takata. Now Bay. Timeout coming for Japani. That's a good call. Yim over to, to Bay. And the foul. You know, maybe we've. Uh, look at this. This is the last score from Korea. See, it's uh, 52. Miyazawa just backed away and then just gave uh, Yim the lane to the hoop. Too easy. So, a shaky start for Japan. And again, you know, maybe uh, because of who they played yesterday, you know, we didn't really, we couldn't really give a proper evaluation of Japan after their big win over the Philippines. And, and similar to New Zealand coming out, getting, getting beat like a drum by China, and then coming out and, and doing much better today. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the good, same as uh, Korea. It's a good point. You can't really see see how good a team is until they play like for like. Uh, Australia are, are a machine, that's for sure, and, and went through uh, Korea like a knife through butter after about the 15th minute. So uh, credit to Korea. They've come out and uh, made you know, they've made a stand right here with a 9-4 start and look the uh, more dominant of the two teams. Fascinating tournament, really, with the uh, addition of Australia and New Zealand. It, it really does, you know, all of the quarterfinals, all the teams will be there. And who's going to play who? Jockeying for position. So it's a vital game, really. Now they push it hard. Yoshida, what a pass. What a and pass, nice play coming right out of the timeout by Japan. Well, they just inserted Rui Mashida in to uh, give help. Um, at the point guard position with Yoshida. A injected a injected yeah. little pace. Yeah, and, and just a bit of more steadiness at that position, the one-two guard, having two point guards out there. Look at this pass here, a little bounce pass, and uh, well finished by Takata. Now, stands to reason they'll be perhaps a little more vulnerable down low. I mean, would you think that one of them could be posted up more easily? Quite possibly, quite possibly. Machida's very much smaller, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that develops. I don't know whether that's Korea's mantra so much. Exactly. And now, oh, no look pass, but she led uh, Rui Machida too much. I think she needs to look next time. <laughs> she wasn't where she thought he was going to be. It was a terrible pass for Machida, really, because Machida was never going to make that cut. It was always going to be to the far corner. And offensive foul. 
boxing out, trying to get some position. Kim Danby. Yeah, I'm not sure what Kim Danby was trying to do there. Whether she trying to get Park Ji Soo open or trying to make a cut. Nishida whips it to the corner, and now the three-pointer is good from Nagaoka. Beautiful pass again from Yoshida. She got the assist for that. She's uh, racking him up right now. Timeouts made all the difference in the world to the Japanese. And Kim Danby looked like maybe was pushing off a little bit, but nevertheless, look at how quickly uh, Rui Mashida tries to get that transition. You're right. They are like a bullet shot from the gun. They are yeah. trying to get up quickly. Like I say, you can learn a lot. What a pass from Yoshida there, and Nagioka just drilled it. That extra bit of split, uh, you know, the extra bit of time you need to get your shot off was made because Yoshida caught the hat, the pass in midair, and dumped it off with four touching the ground. Any play. Well, timeout on the court by Korea. We're all nodded at nine. I think it's hard to get a good grasp of uh, of this Korean team because there, there were times yesterday against Australia where they played well. They came back from an early deficit to take the lead, and then they just really faded. And now today they come out, they land a few blows against Japan, Forced them to call a timeout, and now it's Korea that's on the back foot. Yeah, and again, it made me go back to where you're trying to aim your offense. First play of the game, they tried to get the, down, the ball down to Park Ji Su. They've not really looked into Park Ji Su since, and uh, the likes of Yim and uh, and the Kim Dan Bi have been the main scorers. So maybe that's something they need to go back to focus on the big girl Park Ji Su. Let's see if they get some easy buckets inside. Back to live action here. Takata. And this time, oh, well, they've got another one stepping out. Yuki Miyazawa for the three. I wish she got that far wide open. I'll never know, but she had a, a country mile to work with. Now Korea are under the cosh because they've been found out a couple of times defensively. And offensively need some uh, inspiration. No Park Ji Su in there. And Kim battles in. Han Buell played her college basketball in America. Jeff, like uh, a lot of teams, when you take the big, uh, big player out of the game, it becomes a different game when they've got to adjust, come up with uh, options to score. And the long one no good, and an impressive rebound and outlet pass. You see how quickly they get it out. Again, left wide open. She's hit one, now misses the second. Well, that would have been a real blow, that gun down. Miyazawa wide open again. from Asami Yoshida and Jeff Japan get it up the court quickly, but good hustle from Kim Danby to get back and play defense. And good reach there, almost. Now the hand up and shot under pressure. Yeah, heady play there, Jeff, from uh, Yim Young Hui just spotted that nobody was picking her up. She went coast to coast. Nobody came to her. She kept going. And she'll get the uh, reward with two shots here. 
Buck has come to, into the game. And it looks like, uh, I think uh, Kim Hanbrill has sat down. He's only just come in, Jeff. Maybe had an injury on the bench over there. And the shot is good. Rui Machida. Well, they're they're going to take those threes. Some of them are going to fall, some of them aren't. And now it's uh, momentum shifting back to Korea, who's going back in front with the shot from Yim. Well, Yim is just having a big, big game. I think that's, uh, that might be 11 points for him now. Well, 11 out of 13 have gone to one player for Korea, Jeff. Drive, the miss, and Kong with the rebound. In for three, that is a little too short. And now the foul on the box out. It's on Nagayoka, I think. His Yim's little uh, put the ball in a couple of four a couple of times and a little pull up 15 footer. Nagaoka which is boxing out. Somebody hit the floor for Korea. That's where he saw someone didn't like Nawali in the game, Jeff. That's a good move for Japan. Well, she kind of uh, brought something from the bench yesterday, especially in the second half. Well, 21 points for the game, lead, leading the Japanese scorers. It, I mean, in a 50-point blowout, okay. You, 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 you take it as it is. You know, just as we said, it's hard to get a feel for this Korean team. It's the same with Japan. And now, a missed free throw from Bay. So she gets one to fall after hitting the front of the rim. Rui Mishida. Kyle Moore is in the game as well, number 22. Mawuli throws it right into the hands of Tim. And her bounce pass to Kim. Bay tries to bank it in, but it did, stays out. Did everything right. She's got no, did get the friendly roll, did she? Mawuli, that's her spot on the on the court. We've decided, but she's off target. So that's it for the first quarter, and it's 14 to 12, Korea on top of China. So the uh, first quarter stats. Japan yet to take a, a trip to the free throw line, and Korea have missed a few. Seeing this team, this uh, game kind of go back and forth. So Korea starts better, and Japan stormed back to take the lead. And now Korea have gone back in front. So it has been a game of runs. Yeah, jump and credit to both teams. There's going to be another defensive battle. You can see it already. I think for Korea, getting 
Jisoo back in the game will help them. They've got plenty of presence out of him and Park Dan B. And for, uh, for Japan, their running game is outstanding. Yoshida's made uh, some beautiful passes so far. She has four assists so far, Yoshida. Yeah, she's definitely, uh, as Yoshida goes, so goes Japan. Just enough, look at the stats from last night, Jeff. Fujioka plays number one for Japan. Ten rebounds, ten assists, and six points. I mean, almost a triple-double. Now, fair enough, it's a 50-point game. But I thought that was pretty good. I didn't recognize Absolutely. I didn't, I didn't actually realize that she had that such a good game. Yes, she did. And we saw that Im has uh, the ten points already, and she was really one of the players against Australia that just did not show up for Korea. So yeah. she started very well today. And she's played she's played at a high level. So she's uh, a player that they need. Well, they got Park G2 back in the game now. That's good to see for Korea. Well, speak of the devil. And coming right out, Fujioka. Well, I'll tell you what, she's, uh, it surprises me that she's third guard off the bench. She's uh, a promising player. How old is she, Jeff? She, uh, she is uh, 23 years of age. Yeah, Mick, thanks for asking. One for the future. There's got to be easier ways of getting the ball into a, low, a, a, tall, a young lady that's six foot seven, that's for sure. Oh, Saki, that's right, she's back in the game. And, well, strong move from Nagaoka, but missed the shot. Fujioka gets in there and gets the rebound. Here she is. No look. Mashida. That's a three. Go! No, that's a two. She had a foot on the line. Oh, she'd be upset with that. That's back-to-back -back jump shots for Fujioka. But she had ten defensive rebounds. But she's got an offensive rebound right there. She's everywhere. But what's impressive is she's like the microwave. I mean, you just put her in oh, and she's ready to go. Come on now, the microwave heating up. Yep, you're right. Park Jisoo comes down with it. And look at Rui Machida Great up pass. ahead to Kawamura. What a pass. And again, you say it so many times, but it's worth repeating. Park Jisoo has it. If it's down around her waist, the little guard can take it away. Yeah, yeah, it'd never bring it down. I don't think she had much help, but she was just fighting for the ball. Now, can she go to work here? Great oh, pass. nice Another pass. great pass. There's Kim for three. And a scrap for the ball. They're letting him play, aren't they? And nice pass to Mashida and Fujioka at the center of everything that's working for Japan. It's an forces eight, the timeout. 8-0 run and timeout for Korea. Jeff, I'm going to go back to something here. Offensive rebounding, right? So Park Jisoo, shot goes up. Tallest girl on the floor. How does she rebound? You've got to be active. Don't stand still if you're an offensive rebounder. Make sure nobody can box you out so you become active. And that actually opens up the floor for somebody else, too, because your defender is now is busy working hard to get you off the board. And if you look at Park Ji Su, she's too stationary. She's uh, always expecting the ball or the rebound to become because she's taller than somebody else. You've got to work hard all the time. Okay, let's go. And she has to be uh, a difference maker, really, because we talk about now that Takashiki's not here, she can be the difference. But you know, you know, Japan are aware of that, don't you? But Fujioka was just, she had two jumpers, and then she, she makes the pass oh, on the absolutely. fast break. I mean, you talk about why this is an 8-0 run. Fujioka's the reason. An assist as well from Fujioka there. It's almost as if Tom Hovaz says, right, we need a little uh, shot of adrenaline here. I'm going to put Fujioka in the game. Well, that's a good question to ask him after the game do you use Fujioka in that role as, as sparking your, your team because it's worked here I mean she hasn't so much as sparks and as lit a blaze and if he turns yeah. to you said no I hadn't thought about that <laughs> I'm pretty sure he knows he's forgotten more basketball than, than we'll ever know <laughs> no 
up the miss from Sim. Look at the Japanese run here. All five runners and quick as well. Kawamura. Oh, look at the pass back from Fujioka. I'm with you. I mean, I, I have to say, because it was the Philippines, you know, I didn't really put that much thought into it, but she's shown an even higher level now against Korea. Yeah. She's you know, the fastest player in the court. Yeah, yeah. Very easy. Very easy. Very and slick with it. A good mover. I think that's what I like more about her. That she moves well as a basketball player. Passes the eye test sort of thing, you know. Drive and the basket is good from the Saki. Oh, beautiful move from Saki. And Korea are reeling right now, and Park Ji Si looks like she's injured her foot. I wonder if it's a knee, an ankle, or knee. I'm not sure. It looks like an ankle. Park. Park got inside, missed the shot. Now well, nothing Park going. Hana. Nothing going Korea's way at all. Three pointer, and Park Ji Su with the rebound. the scrap for the ball. Look how quick Japan are. They are just everywhere. And Park Jisoo has to reach in to commit the foul. She's in pain. Yeah. A I'm mixture of pain and tiredness. I wonder if the, the, it's a wasted foul for a five-man five at that, that stage point on the floor, but maybe she stopped the play just to get out. She can't. It doesn't seem like she should be in the game. I mean, she's struggling just to get down the floor. Yeah, but she, that, all that is, you got to suck it up, haven't you? There's every, nobody's playing without playing, that's for sure. Yeah, going to drive on her. Oh, well, that's why you stay in the game and yeah. you grit it out, because you want to be on the SWAT team. <laughs> she is still grimacing, Jeff. And the reach, and now here comes Sim. Maybe she can get it going again. The pass, and Sim takes it back out. They hit the trailer. Quack, she puts it up and in. Nice shot. Old school. That's old school, Jeff. Use the backboard. Nice up touch. What's, if that's old school, what's new school? <laughs> but nobody uses it. New school, there's no backboard. Park Hana with the rebound. Chance now for Korea to make a run, get some momentum. Oh, Park Hanna came up with a nice move there, a little jump shot off the dribble. That's, I think that's, over the years, that's one thing I'm really more impressed with, with the women's game, the ability to stop and pop and stop off the dribble. I think that's a skill that's been learned by a lot of players, and it goes back to the gym, day in, day out work. And that was a quick five. That was indeed. That was a quick, that would be a quick four. <laughs> well, no complaints from uh, the Korea bench. Well, I don't know what you can complain about. I mean, it's, it's, it's over and done with, isn't it? Fujioka again. The passing is sublime. Nagaoka drives in, oh, no. gets into the heart of the defense. Jeff Gate play, the, play of the day. Play of the day. This look, she went from one hand to the other. Look at this. This is a drive. Balls up. Little clutch. This is tough. What's this ball move around? That's a sign of a, a player that knows what's going on. I agree with you. That's probably uh, a fearless, fearless drive. And she completes the three-point play. Now, one, two, two press here. Good to change the uh, the defense up. You'll see a trap straight away on the inbound pass. And it backed off. And now she picked up the dribble, and Asami Yoshida, oh, great hustle, and Nakaoka. Fujioka gets another assist. Beautiful. But I think Yoshida made it, really.
11 point lead. Reverse. Sim misses with the left hand. Fujioka just doesn't slow down. Asami Yoshida. Osaki. Now, Park Kawamura hands it off to Fujioka. And again, Nagaoka, can she finish or what? Yeah, absolutely. Just got the spin on it, Bay. Nothing really much in it in the terms of a foul, but a nudge that the referees didn't like. And uh, look at that lead now. Korea have scored two points this quarter, but in, in response, 17 from Japan in the six, five minutes and 50, 43 seconds we played. This is a, a run that will uh, define this game for sure. 18 to 2 now. Here again, look at she makes the mistake, she picks up the dribble, but even then, well, the your first teammate was going into the uh, trap, wasn't it? Yeah, so. Your teammates, you got to recognize that going forward. Make yourself available. But even then, it's complicated because the Japanese are so cat like quick. Tim Dam or Park drives in and uh, gets the contact. Yeah, I think this is a. This is a tough one for Japan because Park Hannon was completely out of control. Just threw it up there. I don't know who touched the referees must have seen some contact Well so far this is uh, turning into a statement game by Japan. I mean they have really turned it up a notch Joker goes what a pass. <laughs> at 100 miles per hour, yeah, yeah, yeah. makes the pass, gets it back. It doesn't seem possible she's that quick. Kawamura for three. In, pulls up on the break. Quack was uh, trying to take it away. Park reaches in. Look at Asami Yoshida. I love that the refs are letting him play. And the jump shot is good for Miyazawa. Beautiful play. I mean, it's just a it's 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 just a joy to watch, isn't it? It the really speed is. Speed of the game. It's I mean, breathtaking. They fast break left, right, and center, get the ball down quick, work their magic. Everything's well drilled. And Kim Danby misses on the baseline. Now the quick pass. Miyazawa, Fujioka. She tries to get it to uh, Takata. One of the poorer passes from Fujioka today, really. Now M misses. And up ahead to Takata, she's going to go hard, but she's not going to score. Final two and a half minutes of the first half. And on the baseline, M misses badly. And just outruns the defense. Incredible. That is Another play of the day without question. Well, she has three rebounds, three assists, along with her eight points so far. It's just breathtaking. Ten points, double figures for Fujioka. And now into the hands of Osami Yoshida. 
And right now, it is women against girls. They are just absolutely playing at a blistering pace. Yeah, Korea, without uh, Park Ji Su, I mean, obviously on the bench with that injury, they are just uh, not much going on. And the jump shot. They just need to get to halftime and regroup. Yeah, that's a nice shot from uh, Quack, I think it is, isn't it? Was indeed. And the bank shot is good from Takata. Another assist from uh, Fujioka Jeff. She's going to get a double double. She keeps playing the way she's playing. And the jump shot is good. They don't want to trade back. They were just doubling up. Look at her. Brings it back quickly. I think the coach may as well just give her the rest of the day off. I mean, she has been unreal today. Look at her. And she actually played a lot of minutes yesterday. Kim Danby. I don't even see Park G2 on the bench. I wonder if she, she's oh yeah, right, she's at, right the, at the, end. the end. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely got some type of niggle. Yeah, she's limping, there's no doubt about it. So timeout on the floor with uh, 12 seconds remaining. And Japan right now in command. I don't know whether you saw that, Jeff, but as soon as the timeout came, the starters, the, the team on the floor came to the bench, but the team on the bench immediately, all of them, to a man, went to get water bowls, and they stand behind the five. Okay and provide okay. water to the team Cross. coming off the floor. Again, it doesn't matter whether you're a superstar or a player that plays one minute a game. You're going to be Brisbane producer, provide service to the players on the floor. I like it. I know you do. <laughs> it's, but they're going to have to do more than that to, to beat this Japan team. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, I, if you had asked me before the start of this game, I would have said there's only going to be one or two teams that will win this thing, and it's going to, this tournament. It's going to be either Australia or China. And now, having watched Japan shift into a higher gear, I'm thinking, I haven't even thought about you-know-who. Listen, let me tell you, Japan's got these players missing. They come into this team, and now they become a much better team. It's, it's a tough, tough, you know, you're talking about a world-class team. World class. And they're good right now. They got to the they got to the quarterfinals of the Olympics, but with Takashiki. Yeah. Well, look, you know, you, you go a year on from now with some of these players like Fujioka. How look at that. Quick, how quick is she? Look at that. They gave him the quick five. They put the ball down. I wonder what that was about. Kondo. Referee. Referee. Yoshida. Her pass uh, eludes Miyazawa, and that's how the first half finishes. It was a well-constructed play. It just wasn't a well-executed play. No, no, a little, uh, little disjointed. So Tom Uvasi has to be happy. He's, he's saying right now, and to himself, we've got bigger fish to fry. But in the meantime, Japan all over Korea, like white on rice, 38 to 21. Park ji Su definitely discomfort there. There's the number. Japan, 2 of 11 from three-point line. Korea, one of seven, seven of 20 inside. They are really struggling to find anything easy under the hoop. Offensive rebounds, four for Korea, two for Japan. And uh, Turner was 11 for Korea. Not really a, the biggest factor in this 38-21 uh, lead at halftime, but a factor. Well, another uh, thrilling 20 minutes to come your way. Can't wait to see some more Fujioka. It's Japan on top, 38-21. to 21.
38-21, Japan on top of Korea in this all Far East battle. And it's been an intriguing, intriguing game. Korea started well, Japan came back, Korea got back on top. And then all of a sudden, with the insertion especially of Fujioka, Japan took off. And they ran away from Korea uh, going in front. I believe their biggest lead was 19 points. And now they are uh, sitting on a 38-21 lead. So it's big because, A, we're seeing more and more signs that this Japanese team can play without Ramu Takashiki. Maybe that won't be as maybe, – maybe the game to really look out for is if they end up playing against China or Australia. Um, you know, how good is this Japanese team? Well, right now they look pretty good. Well, you definitely put them in the top four right now. I think top three of the, the tournament. Are they as good as Australia and China? Well, you know what? In a one-off game, they give them both a good game, that's for sure. Uh, I still favor Australia China's 1-2, but this Japanese team, Jeff, how much has this, this the program, men and women, come on in the last 10 years? It's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I think the men probably the competition, certainly in Asia, they'll have a chance under Julio Lamas. Uh, we were just talking about it. Um, but we're, we're also talking about how this Japanese team, could they be this successful against an Australia team? Would they be able to get the ball to be able to go out and run the way they ran against Korea? Well, if you have a philosophy of running, make or miss, it doesn't matter, does it? You get that ball down the other end in two to three seconds, always looking for a quick, easy one. If you don't get it, bring it out, run something. I think that idea than, than, than always walking up the floor and never looking at fast break as I think with New Zealand they just just they're just not that way primed right just now. And maybe you'll make a few mistakes along the way, but I, this Japanese team has three, possibly four good, very good guards on this team. Point guards. I mean, you yeah. got you got well, com Osami. I call them combos. I combos. You can play the two and true. Can, you can shoot like a two and you can dribble like a one, and you can see the floor like a one. That's that's the important. So part. Osami Yoshida starts, uh, and she also had, let's see, alongside her. Well, they brought in Mashida, and then Fujioka. Fujioka was third off the bench, wasn't she? Mashida, Yo uh, uh, Yoshida was in there. Mashida. And, and then you look at Kondo as a shooting guard in combination. Well, you wouldn't put Kondo at the point, but the other two, the other three, definite one stroke twos. And then, and then it complicates matters when you get the likes of Miyazawa and Nagaoka stepping outside and hitting three-pointers. And then you're, like, in trouble. And that's the quality of your program. Can you big shoot? If you big shoot, then your program becomes more quality. It doesn't look at all the Australians. They all, they, they can all, Sarah Blavich, great shooter. Okay, so Park G. Su, that's a good sign. She's going to start the second half. She left uh, with an injury. They're going to feed her immediately, and she's going to score. Well, that, was and the, that was the play they tried to start off the game with and, and didn't succeed, but that got an easy two for them. And the penetration of Saki fouled by Park Ji Su. And now being told, don't show me up. This was her at the uh, start of the second half. Jeff, there was contact, body contact, minimal, but enough to get the referee's attention. Where uh, Park Ji Su is upset, the ball was blocked completely with hand on ball. That wasn't a problem. It was the body the referees were called. And it's one of those calls, well, okay. It, it maybe could have been uh, let go, and maybe the next one will let get let go because the referee will, perhaps in the back of his mind, think, well, maybe I got that wrong. So it might have that tucked away in the back of his mind, and then next call goes her way. You never know. Yeah, absolutely. Marginal call. In, and that pass was uh, tough to handle, but it was handled. Bay. She's very, very active uh, against Australia in the early going. And that's just force feeding it. And the foul, Park Ji Su. That's not bad. Park Ji Su made the right move, made the right cut. They just couldn't execute the pass to her. And, and credit to uh, Yuko Saki, 
who stepped in and just got a deflection. Now, Park Ji Su, five fouls. There's going to be a big uproar here, Jeff. Because Park Ji Su will swear that she doesn't have five fouls. Did she have four at halftime? No, she didn't. She picked, remember, she picked up one there right at the start, which she took exception to. And she had, she would have had yeah, three. Three at halftime. Wow. So she's fouled out. Well, you can blame that one on the coaching staff, not uh, telling head coach she had four fouls. I just wonder almost if that might be a blessing in disguise the way she's moving right now getting her out of the game and letting her rest yeah quite possibly it's not a blessing for a career though the way they played the first off without her that's a good call good call look at that i mean japan are giving nothing away and what, they a, are, what a brave move too from kim danby yeah yeah look at park jisoo boy this has uh, got to be the low point possibly of her career career fouling out this early yeah and she's um she walked gingerly. We didn't even know if she'd be back. And but Jeff, you know, who's on that bench telling coach she's got four fouls? You've got to get her out of there, haven't you? Yeah, that's probably what the coach is thinking right now. It's like somebody's gonna pay. <laughs> <laughs> you ever make an assistant coach run wind sprints? <laughs> That'd be something else, wouldn't it? Well, it, to me, it looked like a big shock to everybody. She fouled out. Even Park, even uh, Park Ji Su herself. Oh, Saki almost traveled, and now Kim Danby almost tugging on the shirt of Nagaoka, who's been fantastic. And Quack puts the walls, puts the hands up there. Sim back to M. And offensive fouls to call the moving screen. No, it was just as she came over ah. and went to dribble, Jeff. Yim, I think, just left hand just eased. You send it out the way. Yeah, there wasn't much in it, but Yoshida has uh, been to acting school. She made the most of it. So you're saying she uh, made the most of it. Used to most of her thespian qualities. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they just threw it over the defense there. Yeah, Sim had no chance, no chance. They're completely mismatched. That's what happens when you switch screens. You end up with a, uh, a matchup that doesn't look good for yourself. Jeff, you look at the scoreboard, Korea 23 points after with eight minutes to go in the third. They may struggle to get 40 points in this game, which is already what Japan have. Well, they caught a break there with uh, Takata at the free throw line. And Takata knocked the ball away. did a good job there holding on to it and drawing the foul. Yeah, Nagaoka got the foul. The referee uh, microscopically picking that one apart. There was not so much in it. And she'll leave the game. And coming into her place will be Miyazawa. Look at this, <laughs> Sami Yoshida. Yeah, just everywhere, isn't she? Goodness me. Able to read uh, plays, too. I think uh, that's the other part of it. Reads the game very well. And how in the world <laughs> the pass. Uh, Kondo went out of bounds. Well, Kim Dan B was about to intercept it. Couldn't quite get it. Therefore, Kondo had to catch this ball that she thought might get deflected. Therefore, it just ended up Topping her out of bounds. Cock, hand 
hands it off to Danby open. In, steps inside, again, under pressure. Yeah, from, they're just not getting anything to go, are they? And Chondo right at the other end, and enough, says Korea. Jeff. We need to talk about this. That, that's phenomenal confidence in Kondo. One pass down the other end of the floor and pull up for a three. That's uh, fast break basketball but to uh, really relish. And they are in complete control here. Well, Im had this quick 10 points in the first quarter, but now she's just got 12 and really Japan are not allowing Korea to feel comfortable at all when they've got when they've got the ball. I just wonder whether having a player like Park Ji Su on your team, you don't play much without her. Therefore, when you get a chance to play without her, when she fouls out strange games, you're completely lost because you're not sure what uh, philosophy you've got now. Play like Park Ji Su, you've got a, a philosophy that is she's the focal point. A big reliance on making jump shots after that. Here's the full court pass down there and the pull up from Kondo. Look at that on the break, pull up for a three. That's confidence for you. So they has in her hands and Korea in desperate need to get something, anything going. Five on the shot clock. And without Park Jisoo, and they're obviously they're missing their best. They'd like to be able to pass it down low like they did at the start of the second half, although that would be, I'm sure Japan would make it difficult. Yeah, to, like, really, there's only two scoring threats, and that's Kim Danby and Yim. And they both got to be hitting, hitting the shots. Well, here's Sam putting one up. the foul on Tak Takata. Yeah, left arm of Park was uh, wrapped around Takata's uh, waist and, and the referee was in clear clear shot of seeing that one. Park Hanna claimed her innocence, but I think if you see the replay, it will uh, confirm the referee's yeah, call. Absolutely. <laughs> Jeff, this could get ugly, this one, because I, 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 I'm struggling to find out where Korea are going to get points from because they're not making jump shots. The confidence has gone that way. Therefore, they've got to get, make layups. They're not going to get offensive rebounds. On well, the pass to midcourt, Sim pulls up at the line. Good. Well, 15 foot jump shots off the break. That'll do. And, and that's what I like about Japan. That's an organized fast break of a May jump shot. You see, here's Sung, uh, Sim Sung Jung. Just a little pull up. I like it. But in the space of three seconds, the ball was down in the low block the other end, and we're on the free throw line. That's the pressure Japan can apply. Saki's struggling a bit at the free throw line. Japan are. It's one aspect of their game where they've. Uh, not been fantastic today. This is both. Now here's Sim pushing it quickly. Park. And let's take it back out.
That was almost, I'm going to take it because I'm open shots. Uh, again, shot clock winding down. Didn't get a good shot. Here's a Saki. Mismatch. And just a little unfriendly roll at the backboard, but nice shot, though. Nice move, too. They were patient, Japan. Im has it. And the foul down there by Yoshida. You know, we haven't really seen Mawuli in the second half, and I wonder if that's yeah, good shout, an Jeff. indication that perhaps she's not really in that front rotation of seven, eight players. And you say that uh, 21 points mainly were in the second half when the game was done and dusted, wasn't it? So maybe, maybe you're right there. Good call. Yeah, they're at six and seven here, the Koreans. They're just not, uh, I, I seem to get the impression they're running offense, offenses with the, uh, that would run normally with Park Ji Soo in the lineup. Therefore, you, you get the defense perhaps sagging off and the ch chance to get jump shots. They just, uh, and that kind of turnover there is just a killer. Yeah, it's symptomatic of a, a team that's not really cohesive right now. Mizawa. goes and just ruthless is perhaps the best way to describe Japan right wow. now the ease where they get the ball inside there and uh, nice look from Masaki friendly roll for for Sim Sim has it. It is not looking good for Korea. Quick break, Kondo puts it up and in. Beautiful, beautiful. Even Fujioka on the sidelines clapping that one. That was uh, just This, uh, this is a Japanese pass. team that is building for the Olympics. I mean, they want to be ready and... Uh, that is true, Jeff, that is true, yeah. And, uh, you know, three years time. This is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And you referred to it. You know, I'm, I'm really curious now to see Japan's men in Beirut. Mm. And maybe that is going to make a massive uh, impact. I mean, the advantage, obviously, well, is more continuity in the coaching staff here with the Japanese women. Let me just see, is the Hachimura on that team? Has he um, been drafted in? Uh, I don't think so yet. Maybe. That, that would be an obvious choice for me if you're going to I don't think he's going to play at the Asia time. Cup. No? So Park at the line, Park Hana. Kang Lee Sul is in the game for Korea too. She played uh, 12 minutes yesterday for three points. You know, with Korea though, you know, say they fight and uh, get, and they will get that third place, won't they? Yeah. This so they, you know, they will still probably fancy their chances of, of getting to the, a top four finish and winning a quarterfinal. As tough as it's looked for them today, if if New Zealand do go ahead or Chinese Taipei go ahead and get second place, they they will like their chances of winning that game. Yeah, not without Park Ji Soo. Depends on how that injury goes, wouldn't it? Well, I, I think you're right. down low. Korea will fancy their chances against New Zealand. That's for sure. Because this will uh, determine third place. I'm guessing.
Hawamura there finishes off the uh, free throw. She went two or two yesterday, 14 points. And uh, they keep falling, and you have to think that he's very uh, confident there. I mean, he looked, he cut a look of frustration yesterday, didn't he? Hovast for the most of the game. What? But today, the execution of this Japanese team has been impeccable. Yes, it has. On yes, both ends of the floor. And I, I'll go back to what I said yesterday. You know, don't, uh, just because you're winning by 50, don't give the impression you're, you're relaxed. Keep the pressure up on the players. And you know who's back in the game, Fujioka. I wonder if she can keep, keep it going the way she did in the first half. Yeah, yeah. Because, really, she's been the player of the day. Just a great little athlete, the way she moves. That was an overcooked pass. I don't think Asaki can be blamed for not catching that. Just a little too high for her, but good look. over yeah, Mashida, Japan. Mashida touched it last and Park Hanna is trying to exclaim, claim her innocence and she's absolutely right. The referee was down the other end by the time she'd uh, got off the floor though. over to Korea now 20 point lead maybe you know maybe we've written off Korea too fast here a couple mistakes now by the Japanese but you know this Korea team still has to ooh, Thomas walks this Korea team has to be able to score Clark and we're not really seeing uh, them score at all Open. Finally gets one to fall the three back to a 17 point deficit. Yeah, nice work there from Korea. I think every touch in that fast break. Yeah, that was uh, a fairly, uh, look at that little skip pass there. A little uh, hesitation first before Kim uh, Danby fired it away. Mawuli wasn't too far away from getting after it, that's for sure. Well, looking at the free throw line today, Japan are eight, uh, nine of 13 now. 69%, that's not too bad. And 10 of 14, look at Osama Yoshidi. A job well done, she says. <laughs> she says, don't break my hand with that high five. That's an Akat, I think they call it an Akatsu five, Akatsu five. Is that right? Yep. I'll tell you, wait a minute. Kim Danby, Kong, long jumper. Kim with the rebound. Bounce pass. Mawuli takes it away. Mawuli just got glad to get on the court. Yeah, trying to exercise those demons or whatever she's done wrong, huh? I think she gets two shots here, yeah, both teams in the, t in the bonus. She's still young. It's called the Akatsuki Five. It's kind of like the uh, theme for the campaign for both the men's and women's teams, building towards the Olympics. So do you say, give me an Akatsuki, or do you give me an yeah. Akatsuki Five? I would say, give me an Akatsuki Five. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm making up. I don't know literally what it mean? I don't know. You know. Don't ask tough questions. <laughs> Willie gets that one to fall. Look at that. Another that Akatsuki. Lighter. Yeah, Akatsuki. Yeah, roll over it. Mawuli's only 22 years old, but 
you're going to play this Japanese team, you better. You better play well. And that is an opportunity right at the end of the quarter. She doesn't make it. And wow. Japan have uh, 10 more minutes uh, before they wrap up victory here. They're up by 20. Yeah, that's off to them. Uh, they're, they're playing well. Absolutely playing well. See the shooting numbers. All Japan right now, 10 minutes remaining. They're looking to go to 2-0. And, oh. and Korea, who fell to Australia yesterday in danger of falling to 0-2. Oh also have China taking on Chinese Taipei. Our fourth game of the day. That'll be coming up. Uh, sooner rather than later. Korea, you know, how do you uh, learn from this defeat? You speaking to me? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, boy, they, you know, they were, they were at the races early and things just unraveled quickly at the start of the second quarter, really. Yeah, it's, it's tough, isn't it? You had a tough game yesterday against Australia. Now you put it down to playing a very good team. Well, you're playing a very good team today, and you're still down by 20. And your best players on the bench injured. Whether she can be right, ready tomorrow. I go back to it again. You know, I'm, I'm finding it hard to see where Korea are going to find points from. I think this group is tougher than the other group, though, don't you? Yeah, quite possible, yeah, yeah. To be fair, Osaki or Yuka Mamiya, the coach thinks there is a foul. She hasn't really been that influential. No. Um, but uh, interesting enough, they keep going down to in that low post, and they keep trying to get some success out of it. Only four points for Osaki tonight, one of seven. Oh, nice pass. Nice play indeed. Back to 18. And Hovasma is uh, chirping away over there at the non call on Osaki. He's still going in his mind. Huh? Look at him, though. He buttons that polo all the way to the top. He means business. And nothing wrong with that, Jeff. That's my style, too. I see, I see no. yours has uh, got one clear at the top. When I put it on this morning, I went down to breakfast to this, this top button. Which, by the way, you were 25 minutes late. Thanks for getting me up earlier and then not showing up. Yep, long memory you've got. Same thing happened in Dubai, 2015. <laughs> See, I have a long memory. Oh, whack. That was the Carol's offensive. Into a sake. The offensive call of the day that wasn't called. Japanese players all over the court. I mean, literally, all on the court. That's a great back screen, too. Yoshida, quick to recover, though. Two seconds on the shot clock. She's got to launch it. She didn't see it. Goodness me. Yeah, you know, it, it, the, the, unluckily for Kim Dandy, she's the one you got to blame on that one. Got to know what's on the clock. You can't be passing when you should be shooting. Especially when you're the shooter. And when you're the shooter, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. You're one of the, the, possibly the most dangerous uh, offensive players. Remember, they lost Park Jisoo to five fouls. She got two quick ones at the start of the second half, and it was almost as if the Koreans uh, didn't realize she got she had four fouls. I love this. You know, the Japanese uh, 20 points up. They just sort of uh, 
now under, underscoring how the dominance they're going to put Yoshida in the low post and see if she can go to work that's twice now they posted up the young uh, little guard well Japan's biggest lead's been 22 they're on top 45 23 biggest run was a, a 10 0 run that it really broke the game open they went from trailing 14 to 12 to 22 to 14. And really, there's only been one team since uh, that's been in control, and it's been Japan. Referees have uh, got everybody in a fluster with a call they not the players don't agree with, or well, five at least. From the corner, and Saki misses, but that should be an assist. <laughs> Big smile on the face there of uh, Mizushima. Well, Mizu Saki Mizushima doesn't want to smile too much because she needs to make those shots and she wants some minutes. And nice drive. And up ahead. That, and oh, tough play. That was a great pass. I'm going to tell you, Mick, a stat line that doesn't do justice to this game. And it deals with the player, Ooh. as you look at Nagaoka score down low, it deals with the player that we've been raving about. You Hit would me. never know that Manami Fujioka had dominated this game in the second quarter by looking at her numbers. Just under 15 minutes, she's played four points, four assists, four rebounds. Uh, she has six points, that's wrong, because she hit back-to-back -back jumpers coming in, didn't she? And then she had a layup, I think. So somewhere she'd be upset that somebody's uh, got two of her points. She's stewing over there on the bench. <laughs> Still going at it. I, that that used to drive me crazy. When you, you were you that type of player? You were like counting your points. I know some. I knew used to play with players who used to count their points. I, I, well, because we don't score that many, of course you count them. I was all about the team. I didn't care who scored. Just because you didn't score, right? Because <laughs> I couldn't. Kim. Quack turns. Much better from Korea. Much better. A lot of movement. And Bay attacks. Draws the foul. She was fouled by Miyazawa. 19 point deficit. Um, you know. They'd really need to hit a couple of threes, and, and they just haven't really uh, shown any semblance of consistency offensively to be able to get anything going. No, and they've not really had any clear looks. Now they don't really haven't run enough stuff, enough sets to get open threes. I mean, here's the kind of game it's been for them. Okay, the three of ten from the arc, and this is a team that likes to shoot threes. They're now six of thirteen at the free throw line, and even worse, they've almost hit about one out of every three shots from inside the arc. Yeah, a lot of those shots under pressure, obviously, but it ain't going to cut it at this level. Oh, look at that. Saki drives, misses. Miyazawa, though, she turns it over as she comes from out of bounds, inbounds, it's to get the ball. Fujioka, she's sprinting to the table, too. And uh, poor old Mizushima might come out here, I think. Well, got a timeout, 6.20 remaining. Fujioka's got a chance to jack up those stats. game against the Philippines does that come at the right time for them before they go into a, a quarterfinal against a likely quarterfinal against New Zealand or Chinese Taipei yeah I think so either of those I don't think they'll worry too much either of those teams they play it's just a matter of can you go in with a bit of form under your belt and I think that's the important thing for Korea so playing 
And that game tomorrow against the Philippines will give them a lot of uh, confidence, I'm sure. Well, we really almost saw this team at the Olympics. I mean, they were uh, they were very close last year and not at the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament. And it all basically came down to, I mean, they, they came out and put a, a big number on Cuba. They won 81 to 62. And then what they had to do is beat Belarus. And as well as they played against Cuba, they just did not function against Belarus and scored 39 points. Now, what does that sound like? Look at the scoreboard right now. They've got 42 points. Yeah, exactly right. It, and I think it goes back to where did he see? You see Quack coming up with two. Where did Korea score most of their points? From probably nine feet and out. They get very few points inside. And I think if you look at the way Japan play, Japan will break every time because they want to get points inside eight feet as much as they can because they know full well they can't make every jump shot. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Again, in that OQT for women, in the win over Cuba, they were 11 of 22 from the arc. And then in the loss to Belarus, they were like 5 of 19. Yep, that's, that's one consistency. And not going to be a great shooting team every night. But you can be a great defensive team every night. Three-pointer, no good. And to be a great defensive team against Japan, you got to get back on defense or else that player right there is going to beat you with her blistering speed. Yeah, that's a cool play from Mashida. So the lead right now is 16. In fact, it's not over. Let's, let's don't just uh, write this thing off. Asami Yoshida is going to actually come back into the game for Japan. That's a good, good move. Good move from Hovas because he does not want this becoming a uh, an interesting game for Korea. But that's a shot that Bay has to hit. And she didn't even come close. No. And that'll just calm things down with the player of the game, Fujioka. Tough move. Tough move. Kim dami has got to go one-on-one -on -one here. She's got to go one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, she's backing up Mashida. Oh, oh, she passes oh. it back out to Park. And it's as if anybody else is going to get a better shot than that. It's not going to happen. Park Hana on the baseline. For me. But now the clock is the enemy. Uh, coming up on the four-minute mark for Korea. Still down by 16. They need a stop. Will they get it? Oh, what a pass. Back door. And the lead goes back. And our friend uh, Fujioka now with eight points. Well, she made that one, Bay. Can't trade baskets, though. Miyazawa over to Fujioka. See if this is the move that leads to the basket. Oh, a turnover. Park over to Kim for three. Go! Whoa. And just like that, it's a 13-point game. Wow, good time out here from Tom Hovas. And he's not going to take any chances. No, nope, none at all. They have lost the initiative just a little bit, Japan. They were playing with pinpoint precision, but now a turnover leads to this. The shot from Dampy. Here's another look at Kim Danby. I think she needs some more arc on that shot. I think came down with snow on it, didn't it? That was way up there. That went up to the Himalayas. <laughs> now I know why this roof is so high. Just imagine if you're in Korea. <laughs> it would have to be even higher. Okay, let's go. Is there anything in this little uh, flurry for Korea that would no. cause Havas concern about his team, or is it just a matter of? I don't think so. I think it's just a, you know, it's a run that Korea are making. He's called a timeout. Hopefully, a timeout will stem the tide. It's interesting basketball, isn't it, though? Because you know, you could just be up 22, and since that point, Korea 
haven't been able to function much until just really, literally the last 90 seconds or so, and they've yeah. been able to cut, Absolutely. get it down to uh, 13 points. Well, good idea to come out in the press here. They'll double team straight away. Now, usually the pass back to the inbounder is the one they want to cut off straight away. Let's just see where they get that here. There, oh, oh, good. And Very close. I thought that might have gone back off of. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Yoshida. Now, Kim Danby is important here. Can she take the pass back? That one there, no. Oh, they're not going to get it across midcourt. They did not get it across. I swear to goodness. They were still in the backcourt with 16 seconds on the shot clock. Anyway, Fujioka gets her double digits in scoring. Well, it's amazing to think she's right-handed, but three times today she's put it in left with a nice soft touch. So Korea not rewarded for that great press. Quack. It's good. She does sort of back screens on the weak side. I've not seen that all game. So that's a different philosophy. And they should have been going through this much earlier. Over to Mawuli. Not a good shot. Because it was early. And now the puck just kind of falls over. Tell me why you didn't like the shot from Mawuli. Because you had the penetration. Then she passed it out. Her feet were set. And she was open. Oh, look at the school line, Jeff. I mean, you, you've got to. You want to take some time? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And unless you, if you're going to make it, fine, no problem. If, but if you know, Mawuli <laughs> has been sitting on the bench all game, you know. So and I don't think some, one of the shooters like a, uh, a Saki or Nagel, they wouldn't have taken that shot. Not at this stage. And it's just showing a little bit of inexperience, I think. And Yoshida gets her shot blocked. What a, you know, this 13-point lead now just tells you it, what could have been for Korea. Had they played a little better, had they played uh, shots gone down maybe a bit more, the park had stayed in the game. Yeah, but I, I'm with you. I think that Japan has just had so much pressure on them that they have not allowed them to feel comfortable at all. Well it, well, it goes back to the decision to leave Park in the game, doesn't it? Because now you see that was a mistake because she would have helped here. Well, they have got it back. 2-1 lit to go. They get a three here, they cut it to 10. But they don't have Danby and Kim Danby. Look at that. Look at that. And that is because Yoshida and Fujioka are playing defense out on the perimeter. Oh, again, why have you not got Dan B in there? Kim Dan B. Well, she just took a breather. Hey, you don't, well, what's the point? Exactly. Jeff, these girls haven't come this far to sit on the bench when you're the star, that's for sure. You know, you got good all evening to go back and sit and rest up. That's right, it's about a 10-hour flight, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and the kick, they'll reset it to 14. You know, if anything, Korea have done a good job in keeping Japan down to 66, but the offensive uh, production has been the main element of server. Foul before the shot. So 122 to go. And I just don't think Korea are going to have enough time. No. No, it's... Uh, I don't think they're able to put enough pressure on the ball. Wooly. Okay. What about that? Tough move. Yeah. Tough move. And that's actually good to see because, you know, you want to see her be able to, to go hard to the basket. Yeah. 
So timeout on the floor as you see that replay one last time, or this is the last one, I'm guessing. assists for Japan, just 13 turnovers, 15 assists for Korea, 20 turnovers. And at least after the third quarter, oh no, we don't have the points off turnovers. Rebounding. Korea have actually out-rebounded Japan. Three-point attempt is good from Khan. Well, they haven't given up the ghost yet. Down 12, but a minute remaining. Fujioka, her passing is sublime. A little bit long was that attempt from Miyazawa. Like maybe she lost sight of the ball because of uh, well, I think the Lim, trajectory. Lim was in the wrong position. She should have been three foot further back beyond the three point line. It might have been a better, uh, better option. Oh, Fujioka just blinding speed. Went right past Park. Yeah, and, and the other thing is Fujioka must be upset because the great pass that couldn't score. Therefore, you're messing my assist lineup. Exactly. I mean, she's got 10 points, four assists, four rebounds. And a steal. Another one now. Look at this. Just give it up. Here she goes. Player of the game. Puts it up and in. And now she's right up there around the game leader, Nakaoka. She's got 12 points. Collision of heads there between uh, Kondo and I think it's, uh, it's uh, Kang, isn't it? Just a collision of oh. faces, yeah. Kang, yeah. Final seconds ticking off the clock, and that's going to be all she wrote. So a convincing win for Japan, 70 to 56 over Korea. So you see Park Jisoo come back on the court now that the game is over. Uh, but she was lost early in the third quarter with, with five fouls. I'm not even sure that would have made the difference the way that Japan had command of the game if she had been able to stay on the floor. Uh, but nevertheless, a good showing from Japan and also the appreciative uh, Korean fans who have uh, come here to support Korea. Falling free throw shooting really for both teams. But Japan uh, much better inside the arc. And nothing, nothing much to write home about then, eh, Jeff? Five offensive rebounds, nine for Korea. So they went to work on the boards. Just uh, 23 turnovers. That'll do it in terms of a uh, win loss margin. 23 against 13. As for your game leaders there, Nagioka 13. But uh, I agree with you, Fujioka's uh, performance today such a sprightly player and when you put into perspective about preparing for the olympics jeff you can see where this uh 
this team is going and it's very very exciting it's got to be uh, exciting to watch this team progress Takata had 10 as the third double figure scorer Quack, Park and Lim with Korea as their top scorers I'm going to get a photo of uh, Fujioka as she goes past here. Stalker. Oh, no. Mawuli's in the way. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, look, he doesn't have a button all the way up to the top. So, he fooled us on that one. And Atsukata. that was... Double Atsukata. Now, you see the highlights, and we'll see a lot more positive highlights for Japan. I mean, we're just going to be repetitive by repeating it, but it does it is worth repeating. Korea started well, took the lead, Japan came back, took the lead, Korea then came back again, took the lead, and then the insertion of Fujioka changed everything. Playing at a lightning quick pace, getting up the floor, whether passing or scoring. She was uh, just phenomenal, and as you alluded to, even you know, she probably should have ended up with twice, even more than twice, the amount of assists that she did because she was setting teammates up left, right, and center. And this is a, a Japanese team that has a plethora of options in the backcourt. Hey, it's it's exciting. Listen, let, let me tell you, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm in awe of this team because not for the fact that they're the best or the one of the best because they are going to be one of the best by the time this team is uh, fully in, in fledging at the world championships next year and in the, world, in the olympic games but the progress they're making from uh, all through the ranks is just very impressive and uh, when, when fujioka comes on the scene and comes of age more it's going to be uh, very very impressive So yesterday it was the Democratic Republic of Korea, the kind of major day. And today it's the performance of Japan. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, and Fujioka, like I said, I'll say it again. Right now she's coming off the bench. At some point in her career, she will be the dominant factor on this team, and she will leave this team. That is when this team will go from, uh, say, the B list to the A list. Well, those are impressive words indeed. So that is exciting. And with the 2020 Olympics coming right up in uh, a few years, that's going to be uh, perhaps the time when we're going to see Fujioka pulling a lot of those strings. Yeah, because look at Mashida and Toshida right now. They're good guards. I mean, they're very good guards. But Fujioka has the, the, the potential, I feel, to go an extra step further. Well, just as a reminder, Fujioka, her name is Manami Fujioka. 23 years of age, JX Enos is the club that she played for. So we'll keep an eye on her for the rest of the tournament. Thanks for watching, everybody. Japan get their second win.